So this is my Ford 555. It is an old backhoe. It is a 1970s backhoe. We got this from Clint from CNC Equipment, who is also on YouTube, and I'll put a link to his channel in the description. He drug this thing out of the woods, which that video is on his channel, and hauled it down here to southern Indiana for us. We have done a tremendous amount of work to this thing. It was non-running when we got it, and I had to teach myself a lot too to kind of figure out how to do all this stuff. We did new pistons, new rings, new water pump, courtesy of area diesel service, new radiator courtesy of area diesel service, new gear reduction starters, several new hydraulic lines all the way around the machine, new battery, new battery cables, more hydraulic hoses, including these hydraulic hoses down here and several up on the boom. I did excavation full time five years working for Dirt Perfect and then on and off part time for the past few years. And I've always loved running equipment and I always had a very strong opinion that a backhoe is not good at one specific task, but it's like the Swiss Army knife. It's a good kind of catch all machine, which is why we thought it would be perfect for the homestead. Despite what you see on many YouTube channels, unless you have the YouTube revenue to justify, it's very difficult to justify owning as a homeowner or somebody who has property, a skid steer and a mini excavator and all the other pieces of equipment that a backhoe can get the job done with. So a backhoe is just a good option for us on our property and ran when parked definitely fit the budget. Now the hour meter does not work on this thing. So I don't know how many hours it had, but I do know we were around 60 hours of use right now, which means it's paid for itself in the amount of money I've saved by not having to rent equipment from Dirt Perfect, which is where I used to get all my equipment from. And as we continue to save money with the machine, we're gonna start putting more money back into it, making it nicer overall. Things like rebuilding the cab, it'd be nice to have an actual floor in the cab, although it is cool to be able to look at the tires and see if they're spinning or not through the floor pan. Kind of a handy feature. A quick attach for the front so we can put a brush grapple and stuff like that, and some nice forks. Yeah, you can get flip over forks, but the further the forks are from the pins, the less lifting capacity you have. So if I had a true quick attach, my forks would actually be back on the pins and I could actually have good lifting capacity. There's one thing that keeps coming up in the comments, and I mean coming up in the comments. That's a thumb. A thumb would be very handy. And if you're ever watching somebody operate and you're thinking, man, I wonder if they know this exists that would make things easier. I promise you, nobody knows more than the guy or gal sitting in that seat that there's a piece of equipment that could do it easier, faster, more effective. The person running it knows there's a better option. That doesn't change the fact that this is what we're running, so we got to make do with it. But a thumb would be a huge improvement, especially with the type of work we've been doing with this thing. And the long-term goal, the ultimate dream for what I would like to have is some sort of half-butted hydraulic thumb. Now, I don't want to spend the money. Now, again, I'm not going out this as an excavation company making money with it. So it's hard for me to justify spending a bunch of money on a thumb setup. I mean, ideally, you'd get a thumb that actually hooked up to the pins and was hydraulic and, you know, was just the cat's meow. My wallet doesn't have that kind of room in it. No, actually, my wallet's got all kinds of room in it. It doesn't have what's required to buy that setup. So we're going with a very inexpensive Amazon thumb. It's a weld-on thumb. It's a mechanical or a fixed thumb. Of course, it can fold up and that kind of thing. If I wanted it over time, I probably could modify it to make it a hydraulic thumb. The most expensive part of a hydraulic thumb setup is not the thumb. It's all the hydraulic lines and valving to go with it. So let's look at what came in this box and what all it comes with. So I did get a new, also inexpensive, Amazon flux core wire welder that we're going to use. So we got several things to figure out today. So this is going to be the bracket that actually goes on the boom itself that will get welded on. This is what's going to support the thumb in either the stowed or the using position, however you want to look at it. We've got some basic what you would expect kind of pins to come with an Amazon thumb. We've got some basic pins, the kind of pin you'd expect to see with a thumb that you're buying off Amazon. By the way, I should mention the company that makes this is Vever, and they're the one that sent us the fuel tank over there. This fuel tank, this 58 gallon diesel fuel transfer tank, they sent us that. And they did send us this thumb as well, and they sent us the welder to put it on. I don't care if you buy it or not. I get the stuff from them so I can try it, and then you guys can get some real world input on whether or not you would like to use it. We'll put a link in the description for both the thumb and the welder, but again, I don't get commission off of it. You buy it or don't buy it. Makes me no difference. I just want you guys to know the options that are out there. All right. There's the actual thumb itself. You can see it's kind of got a serration on it and a tip. 
Looking at about a half inch thick on that. That's probably a quarter. That's about a quarter there. We're looking at three eighths on that. Looks like the actual weld on bracket is probably a quarter. It is. All right. So step one is actually going to be take this machine over and pressure wash and degrease the boom really well. I blew this hydraulic hose the other day and kind of coated it. And that's not going to be super welder friendly. Well, let's go to the house, get this thing cleaned up. I'm literally just running dish soap to degrease everything. It's nothing fancy, it's not harsh on me, and it, uh, it does the job. It's also it's super cheap. I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit and I'll come back and pressure wash it off. oily residue on it anymore obviously we're gonna take it and grind this down and clean it up even more before we weld but even with grinding if I left the oil on there and went to grind it the oil would still be there just be smeared around that could cause problems with the weld so I want to make sure I get it as clean as possible let's kind of mock this thing up and see where it needs to go Where that reinforcement comes up, I think we'll just run it right there and make a little mark with some chalk. We'll get the generator fired up, the grinder out, and start getting this all cleaned up. Just clean it up to there. I did top off the propane tank, it still had about half in it, but I've had it before where I'm working on welding projects and it just runs out with just a little bit left to go. It always seems to make sense to just have her filled up if I know I'm doing a lot, and we got a lot of welding coming up. Luckily, it's super light. Normally, the tank sits back in here, buckled up for safety. But I got a bunch of sacrete for down at the bell tower, and I'm not, you know, we're not, it's gonna live there today. Hopefully, this rig is long enough. Hey, anybody want to buy this four-wheel steer creation of half Ford Ranger and half Subaru? 500 bucks and it's yours, man. The Subaru still has a title and everything. Engine's good. Your wife's been bragging to her friends saying that you make good decisions. Don't let her be right about that, you know? So I snagged some rust reformer. I'm gonna hit this one spot that's gonna be under the thumb. I'm just gonna soak it up in some rust reformer just so it has a little bit, a little bit of protection on there. And I did order, I was hoping to be in by the time we filmed this video. I ordered everything uh, to paint this one section of boom because it is the worst looking section of boom on the machine. And we're just, I mean, you're gonna see runs, that's fine because it's all gonna be covered by what we like to call the thumb we're installing. So we're just, we're soaking her. It's about that, well, maybe, come on out of there. 
just about the protection. And we'll let her sit for a little bit, flap wheel that steel clean again. And while this sets up enough that it's not turned into Niagara Falls, we'll open up that other welder, see what it looks like. Look at the athleticism in this thing, huh? Very nice. Very nice. Oh no. Oh, this machine's gonna look terrible now. All right, let's get this thing opened up and see what it's all about. in here first so this is supposed to be able to do flux core regular steel wire it does not come with a regulator or a bottle as far as that goes but you can't get a regulator in a bottle and I can do regular steel wire solid wire MIG it's got a ground clamp clampy and then you can set it up for stick too Comes with the 110 220 adapter, that's kind of handy. At least. Oh! Huh? Included! Wow. Very high quality steel wire brush. Now that is something. Okay. And it does come with the gun, the cable, and it is set up, like I said, if you want to run solid steel. You just have to, you'd have to get a regulator, hoses, and, a, and the gas to go with it. Which I'd like to do someday, but eh, baby steps. And uh, you can set it up for a TIG as well, which I don't know how to TIG well. But now that I've got this thing, might be a good thing to learn on. It's definitely the price point for a learning machine. It's kind of the nice thing about the price point on these welders. If there's something you're wanting to get into or explore a little bit, you can spend the money on this little welder, try it out. And if it's something you really like and you're going to do a lot of, then you, know, you could upgrade. So it is a 270 amp machine. I think what they say is one amp for 0.001 inch thickness of steel, which should be 0.27, which is close to quarter inch thick steel, which is the thickness of the steel for that bracket we're gonna be welding on. So we're gonna be maxing this thing out. If I don't feel like it's getting enough penetration, I'll fire up the actual stick welder, I'll fire up the miller, and uh, we'll do it that way. But I just kind of want to play around with it because flux core wire is gonna be a lot quicker than reloading sticks and stick welding. The main reason I wanted this was thinner metal, sheet metal kind of stuff for like when we work on the dump truck over there behind you. But if it's got the capabilities to do this, let's try it out. I had to swing just a little closer. I'm going to have to, if this works out, if I like it, I'm going to have to invest in an extension cord for that so we can run it out a little bit further. But let's, uh, let's fire it up. Let's give her a go. What a setup right now. Now, I mean, nothing says professional than your 100-pound propane tank next to your 10 pounds of sacrete. Your Amazon 270-amp welder. Next to the Ranwin Park Miller Legend. You know, I mean, it's just, we'll just set this on the Ford Ranger slash Subaru. Everything just makes sense here, doesn't it? I will preface this. There is one thing I'm worried about. I don't have the correct 220 cord, and I'm guessing for what I want to pull off of that, that machine is probably not going to let me run it through the 110. But we'll try it. We'll see what happens. same measurement off the speed square to that on all four corners so good enough for what we're doing this is your reminder I'm not a welder I'm just a guy that owns one all right that's this is the disclaimer so take it seriously look at her in the background back there just watching us work trying to figure out what's gonna happen here Well, it looks like my suspicions were correct. It's just the machine shuts itself off whenever I kick it up like that. And my assumption is it has everything to do with trying to run what the max amount is through that 110. 
but I'm not 100% sure. So what I'm going to need to do is get a 220 extension cord that actually plugs into that. But I'm going to have to get a 220 or 240, whatever you want to call it, extension cord so this can plug straight in to the 240 on the welder because it doesn't have that connection. That's kind of a bummer because I want to try this thing out. Good news is we got plenty of sheet metal work coming up in the future to try this thing out on. The bad news is we're going to be running stick, which is fine. It's just very time consuming. <laughs> So I'm not that great at vertical welding, but this is what we ended up with. And just because I know who I am, we're gonna go absolute overkill, at least in my mind. We're gonna run one, two more passes, possibly a third one to tie those two together. We'll just have to see how they turn out. Here's this side. So I got three passes total on each side, which I think will be plenty, probably overkill. That side didn't turn out too bad. There's this side here. This fella here is real excited to be involved with the party, isn't he? We'll probably buzz that off with a grinder. I do want to run that top well, not so much for strength, but more so for when she's parked. We don't get water, much water running down behind there. Do some real fancy baked on primer here. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's gonna make people jealous. I almost hate to do it on camera. They're gonna be mad. Their paint's just smooth, it doesn't have any cool personality like this stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and swing that boom back over. Go ahead and put the thumb on there. I did notice one thing. I think we're gonna have to add another tab. And I also have a conversation about price point purchases for the homestead. Cause I think there's some points to be made and I think we're making them as we're doing this video. made it where this came out and then I put a bracket right here that that would pin through that would keep it stowed up and out of the way and like I said they do make one that comes with that bracket I just you know see if I can find some material make a few marks and get to work so I found this old piece of C channel I think I can make something out of this. It's just gonna be, it'll just be on the one side. It won't be on both sides, but all it's gotta do is hold that up, right? It doesn't need to, it may be a clanker, you know? We're not gonna sneak up on anybody, I don't think. But I think it'll do the, do the task. got it beautiful i'm gonna hit the other side of the step bit real quick too just to 
kind of deburr that. It gave it kind of a nice little chamfer. Isn't that fancy? Huh? All right. There's what we ended up with there. On both sides. Top. Baked on finish. Where is it? There we go. Well, that ought to work. Called her up out of the way. Yeah, she we're not sneaking up on anybody, but I don't. That doesn't bother me. All right, let me get all my mess picked up, and hopefully we can go down and test this thing. I need to do two things. I need to throw that burn pile back together, and I'm gonna practice picking stuff out. So we got some weather coming in, but we're gonna try and grab a few things from that pile and set them out here in the road so I can pick them up later with the 755. The most inconvenient thing about a manual thumb, if you think about a hydraulic thumb, when you come in, you could adjust the thumb and the bucket at the same time to kind of grab what you need to grab. With a manual thumb, this is fixed. So you're doing everything, stay still. You're doing everything with the bucket, which means you gotta kind of position the machine to get the thumb where you need it and then make the bucket do the work. That also means you can't roll out because as soon as you try to roll out, you drop it. It's a little trickier than a hydraulic, but it's definitely better than nothing. Let's try it out. So it's still slower than a hydraulic thumb, but definitely faster than trying to fumble around with the bucket. There are a couple things we can do. Where it's got these holes here, we could drill more holes further down, which means we could take this brace and slide it down, which would bring that thumb closer to the bucket so you can kind of reach out and snag things a little bit better. Look at that fella right there. Caught that out of the corner of my eye and it distracted me. Let me find a rock and beat that back in and we'll try this out. I don't know how to tell you this, but you had you had an accident. What I really want to accomplish is this drive through the bush here. That's fine, everything. What I really want to accomplish, we'll just drive through it. That's fine. I need to get this burn pile. I've been bringing stuff over to the 755, but I need to, uh, as you can see, I need to get her stacked up. Let's see if we can knock that out. We'll just that's uh, don't ignore all that. Oh, you poor guys. To start, we're just gonna push everything in with the loader and then we can take the bucket and kind of organize it.
far as the thumb goes from Vever, uh, it seems to be fine. She's, you know, she is what she is. She seems to work like a manual thumb and a mechanical thumb. And as far as how it holds up, well, the best way to know that is just stay tuned to the channel. It definitely is going to be an advantage. You can see it definitely lets me get things up on top of the pile better. So that's going to be nice. And just picking up sticks and everything you do with the thumb, it's going to be better for the homestead. And back to that price point thing real quick, you will see channels with the newest, nicest, shiniest equipment. And I'm talking homestead channels. Their tractors are decked out with every single attachment implement you could imagine on that tractor and i'm not saying it's only because of youtube but that's a pretty big helping of it i don't want you guys to feel like you've got to have the nicest shiniest stuff it doesn't work that way my only caution thing is if you do go for and this is a lower end let's not kid ourselves if you go for a low expense option like that you do have to either have the skill set or be willing to get the skill set to modify it and make it exactly what you need or work on it and fix it in case it does break for me that's no problem it doesn't make any sense for me to go out and buy something fancy because this machine doesn't make me any money so i'm going to do the bare minimum to make it do what i need it to do and if it breaks then i'll fix it that's what we do here and we love doing it as far as the welder not working that's the that's my welder not powering it correctly i was looking at the manual and it takes a 50 amp outlet and those outlets are only 20 amp i believe so they're not powerful enough to run it i also have problems getting my grinder to fire up today too so there might be an issue with my welder but stay tuned to the channel we'll get that thing hooked up to 220 or 240 whatever you want to say and hook it up on there and i think that's going to be the ticket i've seen a lot of reviews and a lot of videos where that's a pretty decent little low-end welder and does the job so i'm really excited to try it i got it for sheet metal and i think that's going to work great for me i hope you guys enjoyed the video next video is it depends what this does. I got to get in the house, guys. Hope you guys are enjoying it. I definitely appreciate y'all watching. I hope I'm lucky enough to catch y'all on the next one.